about, about 45 years ago, I, um, I do these, I've, sh I've shown you these books I do for the schools, you know, they're, they're uh, what are they called? Program books, yes, I'm sorry. So I had a whole stack of them ready to be delivered one morning, and heavy rains came, and my roof leaked. And I came into literally a waterfall coming down onto my counter, where all these programs were in boxes, oh. ready to be delivered. Oh, no. Fortunately, I deliver things early for those kind of pro problems, so. I gotta redo it, but that's, it was seamless to them, they never knew it, so. Anyway, get ready for El, El Nino. <laughs> <laughs> or fix the leak. Or fix the leak, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we need a roof right here, right? Yeah, we do. Get a new landlord. Okay. Uh, I've been doing this business for 25 years, as Shelley said. Thank you, Shelley, by the way. Uh, prior to that, I had a career and I sold a business in 1990 and too young to retire. And I thought I would buy a business and I looked at franchises because there's a lot of things I don't know. It's, all of us are like that, but uh, I figured the franchise would be good health. So instead of buying a franchise, I built the franchise from the ground up. Not the franchise system, but the franchise that I bought. And I wanted a business that was not really recession proof, but everybody needed it all the time. All the services they had, 35 different services. Plus I wanted one that didn't have inventory. I didn't want to be counting screws and nuts all day to figure out what my inventory at the end of the year was. And I still don't count my inventory. Is that a good idea? <laughs> I go, okay, I did about uh, this much inventory last year. I probably came up plus and minus, so that's what I have this year. Is that a good idea? <laughs> Works for me. Uh -huh. Don't like inventory. Don't count screws and nuts. Okay, so I've been doing this for a long time, and I thought, well, I'll build it up, realizing all the different services, take five years, and then sell it. So that was uh, 25 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. I still go in Monday morning looking forward to Mondays. And in the petroleum industry, when you look at a bunch of oil wells all the time and not at people, uh, you tend to miss that. So this is an opportunity to deal with clients in retail. And I love that. I really do. In fact, the best person coming in during the day is one that has a problem or is upset about something because if I can make them leave happy, that's good. Very good. I had a guy that had a, uh, <clears throat> we shipped a, uh, this is away from pretty much customer service. We shipped a uh, sculpture. He's part of the uh, surfboards on parade. And he made this surfboard sculpture, beautiful piece. He does these online all over the world. But uh, we shipped one of his surfboard sculptures, sculptures for him. Didn't realize that he had routed out the covering on the surfboard down to the fiberglass on the top. We protected it really well, but it was very, very fragile on top. And we didn't know that. And it broke when it got to Kansas City. <clears throat> so we told him, and the, the carrier didn't, insur didn't honor the insurance because they said it was inherent vice, so. Couldn't do much about that. $3,000 I planned on paying them for, because I said, you, don't, you insure it with me, you don't insure it with the carrier. So, back and forth with this, really nice guy. And he brought, we brought it back, looked at it, and my box was in perfect shape that I built. The, the uh, material on the inside was in perfect shape, so something was about this thing I was concerned about. And he, uh, he said, well, they, they really wanted it, but I'm thinking, well, maybe, maybe they unwrapped it improperly or something, I don't know. But we looked at it, but uh, back and forth on this, and I ended up not having to pay him the $3,000, but I did have it fixed for him, and uh, everything worked fine. He's good. happy. Good. I say three grand, <laughs> <laughs> which is good. Okay, background on printing. <clears throat> I saw the business right away for its shipping part, and the shipping model has changed drastically over the years, as you all know number one shipper in the world is, is Amazon, and they don't pay for dimensional weight, so they can do whatever, they, you, can, you can get this in a box that's about this, this big, and it doesn't really matter to them. Everybody else has to pay dimensional weight. So I thought, well, back then I should have something additional to allow me to adjust to the changes in any business. So that's why I concentrate on printing right from the get-go. And printing was a big part of the business. Back then, offset printing was massive. Digital printing really wasn't in play at that time. 
So with offset printing, as you probably already know, massive presses are involved. And uh, we had a guy in the, in the group, uh, Frank from Coastal Press, he has like 5,000 square feet of offset presses, and still does, unfortunately. So, <coughs> so I was doing a lot of printing back then, massive amount of printing, but it was all pretty much farmed out. We had copiers in the place, but everything I did was pretty much farmed out. We had a lot of contacts, I developed contacts all over the country to make sure that you were covered for whatever you needed. But that really wasn't enough because I was just considered a mail center that did some printing. So over the years, as this evolved, <clears throat> I found that if I'm going to protect you and your needs, I need to protect you with equipment in the shop. And with the advent of digital, digital presses, digital printing, it made it much easier. So I bought some equipment. Actually, these pieces of equipment cost more than a car, each one of them. But it allows me to, you come to me in the morning, you need a job, I can provide that job for you right away. In-house. Uh, those books I've shown you, that's totally done in-house. Some things I want to farm out. Uh, if you order 20,000 flyers, I might farm that out to somebody who do a lot better job quickly than I could for 20,000 flyers. But because of my contacts and my network, I can still offer you a great price. Now, <clears throat> there's a lot of things that we do over the years that uh, most shops like ours don't do. And it's interesting, I, <coughs> I, I counsel the new franchise since I've done it so long, I counsel new franchisees on how to make the franchise work. And I would say 99% of them, have you ever seen a, a networking group that has another mail center in it? Pretty much not. And they won't join which is great because I have seven competitors and none of them are joining anything. <laughs> so it's good for me. But for the franchise system, I want to make sure they're all successful, so I recommend they do join that, but still, they still don't join networking groups. They're expecting you to come into their shop, order something, and go away. And literally, good, just go away. And I see that all the time. In fact, that makes it worthwhile to buy a franchise. It's not run properly, but uh, they don't network. And the process of networking, we have so many different departments, is so critical because most of the people out there have no idea of all the services we have. So the printing became a big part of it and is continuing to expand as a percentage of my total business, which is great. And I want to go over some of the things we do, but the printing process itself, the concept of doing it, I still farm things out, I do a lot in house. But to you, it's most important because you might, uh, just mentioned this morning, you might email me a request for a job and need it before the weekend or maybe need it before the end of the day. And if I farm that out, I would say, well, I'll have it for you sometime next week or whatever. But often, your job is because you need it now. Right? Yes. 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 And Guy was a good example of that. Right, right Guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, some of the things we've done. Oh, one thing, uh, this is interesting. I have, I have one printer out there that uh, will print on canvas. And I've gotten a lot of artistic input. A lot of people wanting work done that they've done some beautiful work done they want to print on, on canvas. We can do that pretty much up to a 1319 in house. Okay, uh, let's see. Some of the things we've done. <coughs> Oh, by the way, one thing I do for a lot of clients, we have about uh, 280 clients on file now that uh, we do this for. But uh, they will send us files to keep, and they'll, they'll call up or email and say, we need certain, certain, these certain files that we'll need to have done right away. And without needing to come in, but without bringing a flash drive or emailing me the file, we just go into their file, make the modifications, and do them while they wait, essentially, if we need to. And we used to have equipment that, uh, I stopped this because it caused some trouble, that you could get on my site, order the job, send it to the printer in the middle of the night, and it'd come in and be there. But that causes its own problems, mm -hmm. and, <laughs> especially if it keeps running or jams or whatever, especially if it keeps running. Okay, uh, some of the things we've done... All of these we've done at one time or another, but some of them are unusual for you people. A banner stand. Uh, did you see when I had my display where you pull up the stand from the mm -hmm. floor display? Mm -hmm. Those are kind of pretty popular for, for presentations. Mm -hmm. uh, teardrop, teardrop flags. Have you seen those on the street? Yeah. That, which is interesting. I just did some for everyone remembers TravelCom. 
uh, when I was out there, which is unusual, I, was, I test the way the wind blows. And California doesn't always blow the same way. You think off, offshore breezes doesn't always blow the same way, but I was testing the way the wind blows because you print the sign accordingly based on the wind so it'll be seen on the street. And I was looking at all the wind coming from the ocean and it turns out when I was there I was doing that, but it turns out normally that doesn't happen. It comes up each boulevard. So I printed the sign one way and it was backwards. <laughs> Every time you look at it, it was backwards. So I told Regina, I'll just give you a new sign. You'll have two. If it goes one way, you'll put that one out. Goes other way. <laughs> so she got her two signs. Anyway, those are teardrop flags. They're, they're pretty popular. Uh, yard signs, uh, either like one-off yard signs for like a sale of a house or something, or sometimes long-term ones for, for contractors, where you could always put it out there. But these are usually coroplasts, which is a short-term thing. Uh, <coughs> let's see, uh, business cards, uh, unusual business card types. Remember when I passed those out that, for a while? I was, each week I was doing different business cards. Those have become really popular, especially the metal ones or the, uh, the ones that are on materials that are unusual, like silk or on uh, suede. Yeah, suede. This is suede ones recently. But this is pretty popular and it's, it allows you, because your business card is your first entry point into advertising. You don't want it to be a brochure, you want it to be simple. Uh, I still, you, anybody go to Contran up there in, uh, for optometry still? Up in the, yeah. Do you remember his card? He and I used to joke about that because his card is like a brochure. Yeah. Just jam packed. He doesn't want to get away from that. But I said, well, maybe you can change some materials or whatever to make that more, more readable. Okay, so those are pretty popular. Um, booth displays, whether it's counter cards or whether it's uh, displays, small displays for your booth, quick, quick change outs. Uh, that's been pretty popular. Metal prints on anything that you can print on anything basically now. Print on wood if you want to. Uh, counters, plays, and cards. Uh, door hangers. Do a lot of door hangers, but we do them a little bit differently because the normal door hangers are usually templates and Kelly paper, or whatever. They just print on that template. We die cut our own, so you make sure you get exactly what you want. Because <coughs> sometimes you, instead of having just a typical small door hanger, you want the whole sheet or a menu, or we're, we do menus for a couple of restaurants. Um, EDDM. How many are familiar with EDDM? Do you know what everyone else knows what it means? Mm -hmm. no. It's probably one of the uh, best things that the post office has done for years. Mm -hmm. It's called Every Door Direct Mail. It's, uh, instead of doing bulk mail, you target certain areas around a location. Let's say you wanted uh, around our store, for instance, or around your business. Uh, you say, pick a carrier route. You don't have addresses. You don't need the addresses. You just pick a carrier route. There's about three to 400 people or residents in that carrier route. And you pick that carry route, and on your piece, it's delivered, it's, it's marked as EDDM, but it's, it's delivered to everybody on that route. So you give the carrier three or 400 pieces, and they'll deliver it to everybody. So you just pick out that carry route, 18.3 cents per <coughs> item is pretty cheap for, for mailing that, whatever you got. Restrictions on size and weight, but it's a pretty nice way to do advertising. You do it, Kathy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very often? No. No. <laughs> we do it with our realtors. We, it's a co-branded kind of a thing, and so it supports our realtors when they send out just solds or... They're probably one of the number one people that use it. Yeah, realtors use it all the time. You can go eight and a half by 11, and it's the same price, and yeah. it's just, I mean, that's huge. There's a realtor over in uh, West, in East uh, Huntington Beach that does a 11, eight and a half, excuse me, 11 by 17 massive newsletter. Yeah. He nice folds that and does the whole thing. So. Yeah. But it's good for anyone who has a small business that uh, wants to target a certain area, which is the best part. You can do up to 5000 a day. You want to do that, Dennis? No, yeah, that was a notification so you down to one minute. Okay. Oh. But that's a pretty good way of, of advertising, very cheap way of advertising. <laughs> yes, sir. Can you do commercial too, or is it just residential? Uh, commercial and residential. Actually, you can designate the fact that whether you just want to deliver to residents or both, which is good. But again, you have limited 5,000 a day, but you just walk in, we do it for you. We just walk into the front counter, drop it off, pay for it. You don't have to do the whole bulk mail thing. Uh, letterhead and envelopes, kind of a thing of the past. We still do those. Presentation folders, cell, sh cell sheets. Uh, we've uh, 
let's see, we've published three books, four books now, where we perfect mind and we do the whole process of self-publishing. And that's been kind of exciting, just to see the books. So. Any questions for anybody that you haven't already asked? Thank you very much. Done.